these are the people that help me and they can definitely help you guys too so please check them all out guys i'm here today to talk to you about a very serious topic for me actually and that is the death of fdm printing now you say wait a second wait a second there's no death of fdm printing there's millions of fdm printers out there uh, at this stage, I still think probably more people have FDM than resin, although resin obviously in the last year, year and a half has really been picking up ever since in 2018 when the Photon came out with the, uh, when Anycubic came out with the Photon for only $500. And that was the first resin printer under two or $3,000 that could reliably print accurately, you know, for a home user. And $500 was groundbreaking. Just eight months after that, the price had dropped to $269, I believe, that same year. So that became really affordable. And then, of course, um, came the Mars. Then came, you know, the best of the best under 500, a little more expensive, the Epax X1. Then came the uh, Photon S, which maybe that was a lateral move, not really an advancement, you know, according to most Photon users. But we're finally seeing in our industry real advancement in 3D printing technology. And by that I mean, and a lot of people probably don't realize this, but the screens in the resin printers, in the original Photon, in the Mars, in the Epax X1 even, um, they're actually, those LCD screens, they're actually phone screens. So they are cheap, readily accessible, and multicolored. They burn out quickly because the liquid crystal substrate in them was not made to withstand concentrated UV light and heat because these are just phone screens. Now, finally, flash forward to 2020, and you're starting to see real advancement in our industry. And I think that's because now there's a lot more money in it, right? The more people that come into this sphere, into this world, the more money the companies are making. Now they can actually start designing product for 3D printing. And by that, I mean the new uh, monochromatic LCD screens, which uh, you find right now in the Frozen Sonic Mini, and you also find, I believe, in the Piopoli uh, Noir. That's Noir, French for black. So the new mono screen is actually made for 3D printing. It's made to transmit accurately the UV light. So there's two advantages to the new screen. One is it transmits the light a lot more efficiently. So you'll find, um, if I'm using, say, Elegoo Gray or Soraya Fast Gray, on my Photon, it's 11 or 12 second cure time per layer. On my Epax X1, that's down to seven seconds because that's a better light source. But on the new Frozen Sonic Mini, that same layer is a two second cure time. Oh, let's say it again. It's a two second cure time because it's transmitting, it's made to transmit the UV light so it does it better. And even though that new monochromatic screen, say on the Frozen Mini, is lower resolution than the LCD phone screens everyone else is using, because of the better light transmission and because it has a parallel, this is another advancement we knew about, but now it's becoming cheaper, parallel um, UV light array down below shooting the light up more evenly. And that combined with the better screen, even though it's a lower resolution, it's giving me better prints than any of my other printers, which just blew my mind. But this just got me thinking about the, the industry itself. So finally, these companies are spending the money in the R&D and they're making advancements in 3D printing technology instead of cobbling together other stuff like regular phone screens and trying to use it for 3D printing. So wait, how does this relate to the death of FDM printing, you might ask? Well, as we all know, anyone who's you know seen high-res photos or in person, you've seen the difference between a, a resin print and an FDM print, it's, it's night and day. I mean, the resin is a hundred times better. Now, let's go back in time a little bit. The FDM printer took hold, uh, I believe it was 2016 when Joseph Prusa, who a real pioneer, a lot of people owe a lot to Joseph Prusa, so, so hats off to Prusa. But they came out the first affordable home printer, you know, at, at about 800 bucks, I think it was, so somewhere in that price range. And the reason they were able to do that is a lot of people don't know this. We're going to do a very brief history lesson. 3D printing was actually invented in, I think, the 80s, early 80s, uh, for resin and FDM, actually, but not much was done with it. Starting, I think, in 2009 and through 2016, when Proust introduced his machine, all the patents on 3D printing were expiring. 
That's what allowed all these other companies to enter into the field because now 3D printing was no longer patented. So if people are thinking 3D printing is a new technology, no, the reason we have it in our homes now is because it's an old technology. And once the patents expire, people can come in and, and copycat it and make it cheaper. So that's what's been happening. So, you know, Prusa paved the way and FDM printers, you know, when Creality copied Prusa and made it cheap, you know, under $300 version, basically of the Prusa machine that was reliable. And we, we all know that's the Ender 3. That kind of made it finally, because $800 Prusa had a good machine, but that's not really affordable, affordable to most people. When you get under $300, you know, it, it allows a whole new range of consumer to come in. And also, instead of making an expensive hobby, it, it now becomes, it was becoming more cost effective to print your own stuff at home, like printing a terrain house at home off a $250 ender at the time. If you print enough of them, it's way cheaper than buying those houses, which you have to do buy physical resin casted models or you know whatever you got from online stores like a place like Dwarven Forge, how, how much per tile did you pay? It's crazy. So the Ender 3 made uh, printing at home not just a hobby, but a hobby that in the end actually could save you money. And then flash forward again to 2018 when Anycubic released the Photon, boom, suddenly you know resin printers are affordable. Flash forward another year, then they're really affordable. Now you, know, you can get a Frozen Sonic Mini for the same price as an Ender 3 Pro. And, and the Frozen Sonic Mini prints incredible. So again, why do I keep saying the death of FDM printing? Why is this titled the death of FDM printing? Well, forgetting that there's a huge installed user base of FDM printers. We know this. I have three of them now. Maybe I have a fourth on the way. Um, and I love them. People know I print, you know, I print, you know, a sci-fi drill. I print my castle walls. You know, FDM print, and I get great results on my FDM printers. I'll, I'll have some pictures. Um, I love my FDM printers, but I still predict they're going to die. And it's not going to be that long. And the reason why is, we're going to get back to the technology. This new monochromatic screen, it works great, as far as I can tell. The only thing we don't have real evidence on yet is longevity. Now, it's supposed to, and this is actually interesting, it's supposed to last up to 2,000 hours of printing way longer than the phone LCD screens, which weren't made for 3D printing, are lasting currently. So if you get something like the Frozen Sonic Mini for 229 bucks, or 239 bucks, if you can find it, um, if you take out the cost of say a, a, a Photon or Mars of having to replace the screen every three or four months, which is an extra 40 bucks, then that Frozen Sonic Mini price effectively, instead of 239, it's more like 100 bucks. Okay, so if you really think about it, this new technology, is, is pretty groundbreaking for our industry in terms of cost. Again, the death of FDM printing, great. What you're saying has nothing to do with the death of FDM printing. These resin printers all have tiny volume. You need an FDM printer, the stuff I just held up for you, or something like, well, I don't know if you can see that, my mushroom house back there or whatever. I have these incredible things I printed on FDM that would never fit on any of my resin printers. But here's the thing. Piopoli, as I mentioned before, has the Noir. It's a huge build plate. Now, it's also, I think, an $1,800 machine. So I know no, we're not running out and buying it. Most people, because that's out of our one's price range, who's doing this as a hobby. But how long is it going to be before that machine, either Piopoli themselves or maybe someone like Anycubic or maybe Elegoo, is going to make that monochromatic screen that size, big size, and maybe they'll be able to get the price down below 1000 bucks, maybe to 800 bucks. But right now, if you go to a forum and you post on there and go to Facebook forum or Reddit and say, I have $1,000 to spend and I want to do minis in terrain. Well, you're going to get a bunch of posts that say, depending on what people own, buy a Photon, buy a Mars, buy an Epax, buy a Frozen Sonic Mini, and buy an Ender 3. So everyone recommends basically the printer they have because most people don't have more than one and haven't tested. That's neither here nor there. But the point is everyone's going to tell you, get a resin printer for minis. Get the FDM printer for terrain because you need a bigger build volume. So what happens when someone comes on a board in maybe three or four months from now, six months from now, I'm not sure. Maybe they get on a board and say, I have $1,000 to spend. And someone's going to say, get the Anycubic new 4K monochromatic screen, you know, large volume printer for $800. You can print all your big terrain pieces on it, but they're going to print out perfectly with no layer lines resin printer that has the same volume as an Ender 3, 
why would you buy an FDM machine if you could get a resin printer that could print that same size and the price range was close enough that instead of having to buy two printers, you could just buy this one resin printer, right? And, and who knows, maybe one day that price will, someone will get that price down to $600 for a large volume resin printer. And I know there are some people who don't care. FDM is pretty good. I love my FDM prints. But at the same time, if I could print them in resin, I would do it because I'm, I'm a bit of a perfectionist. So, you know, I print even my FDM prints at 0.08 millimeter layer height because I want them as good as possible, as few layer lines as possible visible. So for someone like me, as soon as a large volume resin printer becomes affordable to me, to, to a price where I think it's reasonable to buy it, to print the terrain, I'm, I'm gonna adopt instantly. And I think there's a lot of people out there, especially we're in COVID now, it's a terrible time, no one has money, we're all losing money, people are unemployed, but forgetting all that for now, when that bounces back, because the technology's not there, no one's putting out this machine yet, but maybe six months from now, maybe it's a year from now. Someone's gonna put out a cheap, relatively cheap, large volume resin printer with this new monochromatic screen and a parallel array, and I just think FDM's gonna die. What would be the point of having an FDM printer if you could print in resin the same size? I mean, the resin printer is more reliable, less fiddling. Once you know what you're doing, which isn't hard, if, you're, if your bed is leveled, and the temperature in your room isn't too cold, all you have to do is know your resin settings, it's not that hard. So resin printing is really quite easy. Forget the mess, forget the smell. It's a lot easier than FDM printing. We all know that. Even someone like me who has a dialed in ender, every now and then I still have to re-level the bed or something funky happens, or there might be a, a little partial clog, or the is not working properly, or the, the extruder, what, whatever it is. For me, resin printing is just way, way easier, more user-friendly in the end. Especially if you're prepared, the mess, the smell's not a big deal. If you're prepared and you know what you're doing, you have all your materials laid out properly, cleanup's not a big deal. And, you know, venting your printer or charcoal filter in line or whatever you use, not that big a deal. So I do think FDM printing is going to die relatively soon. And all it's going to take is a good, reliable company to come out with a large volume, you know, mono, I think it's going to be a mono screen, mono screen printer with really large volume at a reasonable price, whatever we think think is reasonable. And to me, I think a company's gonna have to come out with a sub $800 printer because right now, if someone says, you know, I have my money to spend, like I said, you know, buy a Mars, buy Photon, buy an Epax, out on the Ender 3, you might be at around 500, 600 bucks. If I get all the value for both those things from one resin printer, I'd pay a little more. If I get it for seven, 800, to me, it would be worth it. And who knows, if they ever come out with something like $600, you know, I can't imagine that everyone, you know, wouldn't adopt. It might take some time. Some of you, some of the people like me with a bunch of FDM printers, you might say, well, I have it. I want to keep using it. I'm not going to just replace it instantly. But I do think there'd be a lot of people who say, hey, if I could, first of all, the other thing to talk about is speed. At the speed these mono screens print, a house that I print on my Ender, uh, and I don't think I have one down here to show you handy, but if I build like a house from the city of Tarak Kickstarter, which I absolutely love, but some of those houses, they're like nine part prints. Each print takes me two to three days on my Ender. And in resin, especially on a mono screen, if it was large volume, it would do each of those pieces in about seven to eight hours only. So I could do, I think I could do the whole house in say three days, which now takes me on my Ender 18 days. So I would say roughly six times as fast. Uh, with better detail, less fail, uh, you know, no strings to scrape off, no blobs, no no lines where it maybe didn't extrude perfectly for a layer. I mean, you know, when resin can do what the FDM printers can do in terms of size, again, to me, an FDM printer just doesn't make sense anymore. It's it's old, obsolete technology, basically, as far as I'm concerned. So that is why I titled this video, The Death of FDM Printing. I think FDM Printing... My guess is within the next year to year and a half, you will see one of these companies come out with a cheap, large volume, mono screen printer, and that'll be the beginning of the end for FDM. Because like I said, a lot of people, since we already have the machines, we're gonna keep buying film and keep using the machines. Maybe we don't wanna just go out and spend the money to replace two or three machines we have with this large volume resin printer, because how do you justify spending an extra 600 to $800 on the machine when you already have functional FDM printers? But anyone new coming into the arena, everyone's going to be saying, hey, 
get this new large volume resin printer, don't bother with FDM. That's what I'll be telling people if I see one that works well and has a reasonable price. So uh, I just want to give you guys a heads up, don't throw your FDM printers in the garbage yet. We haven't even seen a prototype for one of these printers yet, so I'm not saying it's there, although I'm sure the companies are working on it. Like I said, since Piapoli already has it out, it's, you know, the Piapoli Noir is out. It's functional, it works well. It's got the, the 4K monochromatic screen. I think Frozen uh, is just introducing a new model also, and again, they're close to $2,000, I think, but also it's a 4K monochromatic screen, which that's gonna produce incredible detail. And so the big guys are out there with the machines already. That means any Cubic and Elegoo, right? Maybe a company like Lotmatch, which is an up and comer, you know, they're gonna copy these machines and whenever they copy, you know they make them cheaper. So it's gonna be very interesting to me over the next year to see what happens with the pricing on these large volume machines and to see what comes out of any Cubic and Elegoo uh, and EPACs in particular, I mean EPACs to me is the best under $500 printer already anyway. So I'm very interested and curious to see what those three companies in particular come up with in the large volume mono screen arena, you know, over this next year, year and a half, whatever it's going to be. Hey, I, I, I'm hoping they surprise me and, and, and drop an announcement like next month that something's coming. It, it would be great. I mean, honestly, I'd be the first person, I, as much as I love my Ender, and my lot max that I use all the time right now, and they've really been reliably pumping out great prints for me, I can't complain. I'll throw those two right in the garbage. I mean, I'm not gonna lie. If I can do big volume resin, I'm doing it. I, I, there, there's no way that I'm sticking with FDM if I get a large volume resin printer that works well. So that's it. And this is just food for thought. Um, please post in the comments. I know a lot of people are gonna argue either way with me, there might be some engineers out there with more insight into this than I do. I'd love to hear what you're thinking or what you're working on or if you know companies are working on something, please post the info. You know, uh, I don't profess to know any of this stuff. This is, this is all just conjecture coming out of my head. I'm reasonably certain the companies are working on it, obviously, but I'm saying I don't have any concrete knowledge. So if any of you do who are watching, please post that knowledge if, if you're allowed to, if you're not violating any... Uh, uh, non-disclosure agreements or anything like that. So that's it. Hope you like. Please, uh, please like the video. Please subscribe to my channel and uh, please watch my other videos. I have a lot of review videos out now on these various resin printers and I think of interest for anyone who maybe doesn't have a printer yet, watch my Frozen Sonic Mini review and also the Anycubic Photon Zero review. I think those are both very, very interesting machines, especially the Frozen Sonic Mini. If you haven't seen my review of that, Please watch it because uh, it shows you what the mono screen can do. And I think it's really pretty impressive. So that's it, guys. Thanks, and happy 3D printing.